Today we'll be looking at another set of vocabulary terms having to do specifically with testing. Like the other lists we've gone over in this category, these will be words you'll run into in the various tests you'll take at every level of your education. You'll probably know many of these words already, but it helps to review and also take a deeper look at words like this, particularly before you have a big test to take. Let's go ahead and begin. Our list this week starts off with term number one, comparison. Two, contrast. Three, passage. Four, shift. Five, previous. Six, primarily. Seven, primary. Eight, argue. Nine, support. Ten, analysis. Our first term this week is comparison. Comparison means the act of examining resemblances. A comparison is putting things together to see how they are similar or different. A writer may make a comparison between two ideas or events. As a reader, you might make a comparison between two passages or literary works. You'll very frequently be asked to make comparisons during testing. Term number two is contrast. Contrast means to put in opposition to show or emphasize differences. To contrast two things is to point out or emphasize how they are different. An author might include certain details to contrast or to show the differences between two different things. To compare or with a comparison, you're being asked to show what the similarities are. When you're contrasting or showing contrast, you're trying to show what the differences are between two things. These words are put together for obvious reasons just because they're going to be paired so frequently during testing. You will be asked to compare and contrast passages, works by different authors, words. Just about anything could be an example of something you could see in a test where you need to show the similarities and differences. Term number three, passage, means a section of text, particularly a section of medium length. A passage on a test is a distinct block of text. You will see reading passages on various parts of different tests. It's very, very common in anything having to do with language arts reading. You might have to read a passage before writing something in response. You'll see this word often in question stems, where you will be asked questions that begin, according to the passage, or the main purpose of the passage is what? And then you have to explain. You'll very frequently have to analyze and look deeper at passages and show what they mean, what they're about, that type of thing. Term number four is shift. A shift is a change in quality. To shift is to change. Sometimes a reading passage may take a turn in tone or message. The focus of a narrative may shift, or the writer's perspective might shift. If you've ever seen the Pixar movie Up, there's a bit of a tonal shift in this movie. It starts out incredibly sad with the prologue and everything that happens in it. But after the first few minutes of a movie, it's much more lighthearted and it begins to just get more and more kind of happy and free and funny as the movie goes on. There's a big shift in tone or how you the viewer is perceiving it because of what's happening on screen. Term number five is previous. Previous means just preceding something else in time or order. Previous means just before. If test instructions refer to the previous question, you need to look at the question just before the one you're now working on. Most likely, you will have to use some decisions you made in answering the last question to help you choose the answer to the question you're thinking about now. The prefix, P-R-E, pre, means before, so when you see it at the beginning of a word, it's probably going to have to do with something from the past or something that happened before, the previous incarnation of something. Term number six is primarily. Primarily means for the most part. Primarily is often used in test questions to mean mostly. For example, a test question may begin, the author of passage one refers to X primarily to suggest. And this is a way to tell you, sure, there could be other reasons the author refers to X, but you should be looking for the main reason, the primary reason. And that brings us to term number seven, primary. Primary means most important. Just like the word central, the word primary tends to show up before words like purpose or claim to indicate that the main idea of a passage is being discussed rather than less important or secondary ideas. If you're asked about a primary idea in a passage, rereading the introduction and the conclusion where that's probably gonna be restated may be a good strategy to think big or to find what that means. 
primarily basically means first in importance. When you vote in a primary as part of an election, for example, that's the first election in a series. The primary is going to pick who is going to be running for office between different parties or groups. When a matter is of primary concern, it means it's of first importance. It's of a primary concern that you get to your job on time, because if you don't, you're going to get in trouble. Term number eight is going to be argue. To argue means to present reasons to support one's views. When you see argue on a test, don't just immediately think fight, people punching each other or screaming at each other. Instead, think about making a point by building a logical argument. One author might argue that it is necessary to raise taxes, while another author might favor cutting taxes and making people pay less for them. Argue is obviously the beginning of any argumentative writing piece, when you'll be asked to pick a side, make a claim, and support your side in that argumentative essay. A good argument is almost always backed up by facts rather than just opinions. If you're giving a speech in argument of support of something, then you are trying to convince the other party to come to an agreement or to see the side that you see in that discussion. It doesn't have to be screaming or yelling or fighting. And hopefully the result of that argument will be the other side coming to support you. Term number nine is support, which means to establish or strengthen as with new evidence or facts. To support is to make stronger. You might be asked to identify evidence that supports an author's claim or what the author believes. Or you may be asked to interpret a graph and determine whether or not it supports a particular idea or conclusion. When you see the word support, think about all the things a writer does to prove his or her point. If you agree with or approve of a cause, a person, an idea, or something like it, you support that thing or that person. If you support a charity, you might give money to that charity or advertise or attend an event or something that they're putting on. To support is to be on the side of that thing. And in a test, that's usually going to mean you needing to support a position that you take in an essay with facts and evidence and things that you've done research on. And that brings us to term number 10, analysis. Analysis is a detailed investigation or examination of something. Analysis goes beyond just a mere summary. Instead of just giving the main points of something, it involves breaking an argument down and figuring out how the pieces work together. Technically, anytime you answer a question on a test, you're going about the process of analyzing it or doing analysis on it before you answer it. Analysis is just another word for breaking something apart and trying to find the answer or trying to find the base parts of it that make it important. It doesn't just have to be an argumentative writing, it can be in literally anything, as long as you're taking a deeper look at it. And now that we've looked at our 10 words and definitions for this week, it's time to take some time to analyze those a little bit deeper. Take those words apart, look at the definitions, think about how you've seen these words appear on tests, at the, tests in the past, Good luck anytime you see them come up in the future. Thanks.